Israel's violence, Israel's genocidal slaughter of our brothers and sisters from Gaza to the West Bank to Lebanon to Yemen to Syria to Iraq. A genocide. Shame! 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 The Washington Post, like every other Western media outlet, has manufactured consent for this genocide by spreading Israel's lies, spreading Israel's terror, spreading Israel's justifications for genocide. Shame! Shame! And so we're going to stand out here and continue the rest of our program to let them know that their complicity does not go unnoticed. As we reach over 500 martyrs 
in just 24 hours of bombing in Lebanon, it is more clear than ever that the Zionist entity will not stop at anything less than total conquest of the region in order to protect their settler colonial interests. We see the same undeniably false justifications coming from the occupying forces about their invasion of Lebanon that they used to justify their escalation of the genocide in Gaza because our people dared to resist! Israel's actions in Palestine and Lebanon are not in any clear form self-defense, but rather a response to the people resisting occupation, resisting land theft, and resisting their own murders. They think that they can copy and paste their reasoning as if the world will turn their heads and blindly follow. And although some have, it's not going to work on us, the people! to snatch back power in a panic, grab at any land they can get their bloody hands on, and regain control of our countries. But with this, they are failing, as any weak excuses they used are clearly crashing and burning down on them from above, and the truth is rising! What the Zionists seem to be forgetting is the bitter taste of defeat served to them by the Lebanese resistance in decades past. It's time they are reminded! When we call Lebanon the graveyard of Zionism, it is simply a statement of historical fact. Understand that this is not the beginning and it is not the end of sacrifice. There is a long road ahead of us and it will require more than rage. It will require steadfast commitment, organization, and faith. But it is a road we must follow. Gaza cannot be alone in sacrifice. Yemen cannot be alone in sacrifice. Lebanon cannot be alone in sacrifice. We must join them. The blood of our mortals mandates it. Just as Lebanon and Palestine are brothers in struggle, we too are active participants in the fight for liberation. We will be victorious. There is no other option. The soil of the Levant has been watered by the blood of our martyrs, and it has grown a resistance movement that cannot lose. <laughs> Victory is divine, and it will set the world ablaze. not important but my story is uh, thank you all for coming out today I'm happy to be here celebrating with all of you the martyrdom of my cousins my uncle's entire family my cousin's entire family yesterday in the criminal attacks on Lebanon I say celebrate because we are a people that loves martyrdom we are a people that will not stand down as long as we are faced with oppression 
as long as our fellow human is faced with oppression. We are not numbers. The children of Gaza are not numbers. And for the war criminal, for the criminal Netanyahu, who has speeches saying that they do not target Lebanese civilians, that they are only attacking militants, that they regret the use of human shields, I would say to him, we have long, long, long known that Israel targets civilians directly, does not need them to be used as human shields. My family that attained martyrdom yesterday were all women and children. There are no men in that household. My uncle passed years ago. My cousin works abroad in diaspora to provide for his family. And I'd like to share with you all of their names. Siham, Abdul Karim, Hakim, Rola, Mustafa, Badruddin, Zahra, Khalil, Jukbir, Fatima, Rida, Badruddin, Mustafa, Rida, Badruddin, Hanin, Rida, Badruddin. We celebrate their martyrdom because what the Western world has yet to realize is that we are happy to die martyrs on our land. We are happy to die fighting for justice. And while I do grieve, I grieve and I grieve, but more than my grief is my rage and more than my rage is my happiness for my cousins who attained glory as martyrdoms, as martyrs. There is one thing that I will never recover from. The Jnub will recover, Gaza will recover, Palestine will recover. My family, my people will return to our lands and soon after them, Palestini will return to theirs. But one thing I will never, ever recover from is the fact that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris made me complicit in the murder of my own family as a taxpayer in the United States of America, made all of us complicit in the murder of our families, of our people, of our children, because they use money that should be going to homeless people, that should be going to end homelessness, to health care for everyone, things that Israelis enjoy on our dime. And that's something that I will never forgive. That's someone I can never, ever cast a ballot for. Not yesterday, not today, not tomorrow. Although the destruction yesterday was immense, was catastrophic, was criminal and inhumane in its proportions, what I see, as Sayyida Zainab said when asked about what she saw in Karbala is Lam ara illa jamilan. I do not see but beauty, beauty in my people's resistance and beauty in that in their dying moments they say, Hey hat min nazilla, hey hat min nazilla, even when my, my cousins are buried in two plastic bags in one grave because there are so many body pieces that the civil defense volunteers who were left could not identify them and had to bury them all together because the carpet bombing was not going to stop anytime soon. Hey, Hatman Nazilla. Hey, Hatman Nazilla. Thank you. On October 5th, we will be back. We will return to the White House at 4 p.m. to mark a year of genocide and a year of resistance, to mark a year, another year of a hundred years of Palestinians resisting Zionist occupation, siege, and ethnic cleansing. So be there, 4 p.m. at the White House, October 5th. <laughs>